so I'm bringing Chargezilla to its first Cars and Coffee show here in Colorado. Um, it just got here, what, a couple days ago, a few days ago, and um, I'm a bit nervous because although this is still, in my opinion, a super, super cool truck, it does have electric powertrain, and I want to see how, well, how the community receives it. I want to see what they say, but I'm a bit nervous. Okay, so let me pull up. I might have a couple friends uh, here. I think at least Destin is here. And uh, yeah, I'll see what they say. I think we'll take this with us. We'll put it right there. Back in the day, they made them like they are supposed to, right? With heavy duty real metal. This thing starts every time. <laughs> every time. And I haven't even flooded it yet. We decided to put the, put the truck in the scale here. Yeah, but you're still standing on it. Okay, let me get off of it. Okay, I arrived. Dustin, hey. It's so weird. What do you think? Weird. It's cool. It's all right. All right. Well, is just this the charging port? Uh, jump in. Yeah, that's where the fuel tank was. I see. It. Hey, can we put one of these things in like your receiver head to take a picture and like do it? Well, we don't have to. We don't have to oh, because well, see, you are electric. Well, because this it's is a uh, well, it's a conversion. <laughs> nice. Check this. Out. Uh, you should. You should. You should take a look. Oh my gosh. So this is. Um, it's got two electric motors uh -huh. in the trans tunnel where, uh, where the trans tunnel, uh, well, where the transmission used to be. Um, and then um, it has uh, Tesla batteries. Nice. So this is a Tesla truck. <laughs> Tesla uh, motors or? No, Tesla uh, the motors come from Illinois. My opinion is <laughs> this is incredibly awesome and. And weird. <laughs> and so, like, what's, what's, what's that? Apocalyptic almost like the future is colliding. Yeah, I was just curious like I saw I saw the truck plugged in I was yeah. like, what, what am I looking at here? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a 1965 uh, F100 so it started out obviously with like a straight six uh, yeah. engine and then um, It was sitting around It's a long story. Yeah, we wanted to see what else we could do with it So we okay. electrified it so come over here. All right So so if you look inside all right, there are two motors uh, they're ca called Hyper 9s, wow. so they're basically com combining one goes into the other. Okay. So there is a motor in the front, the motor in the back, so they kind of are connecting, and then okay. they're going directly into the, um, they're going directly into like the transfer case and like yeah. the axles that were there before. Hey, hello sir. How are you? Um, don't touch the uh, orange wires. It, what, what if I lick my fingers? <laughs> no. <laughs> How's the pickup and acceleration? So a truck this heavy. It's tuned, so it weighs about 5,000 pounds. Okay. So it didn't really gain much weight. Okay. So it, it was 5,000 pounds, it still weighs 5,000 pounds. Wow. Um, the acceleration is tuned to be gentle. Sure. Because we, the old axles and like the yeah, old transfer wanna, case, yeah, yeah, we don't want to grenade all that. That so, makes sense. So it's tuned, it's tuned really to be kind of gentle. What do you, what do you think? I, I, when, when he said it was electric, I thought, I, I thought it didn't sound electric when you backed it in. So uh, what you probably heard was the water pump running. But but yeah, no, it is it is truly electric. That's fun. <laughs> That's super fun. Congratulations. You, you think it's yeah. But what do you think? Because it's like it's the ultimate it, sleeper, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's the ultimate sleeper. It's it's a. It's a 
new way of commuter. Uh, uh, it was just a kind of a show. Uh, I wanted to get people's reactions and people's yeah. opinions. Uh, yeah. um, so it has about 80 kilowatt hour battery. And uh, there are two chargers that are hooked up to it uh, for a total of six kilowatts. Uh -huh. So 80 divided by six, that's about 12 hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, so this is not like a cross country road trip right. <laughs> truck. Uh -huh. So, yeah. but what do you think about like the way like this truck looks or this, I this concept? Like, I think it's uh, super cool ingenuity and, and who'd have thought, you know, to really do it into a lifted four by four. You know, right, it's pretty cool. So yeah, it will go about 140 miles, and um, but I, I I think I mean the, the use case for this truck really is like kind of a afternoon driver, right? Or just take it, or you could work on a farm. Oh, I wonder what kind of uh, torque those electric motors have for climbing. Monstrous torque. Very cool build. <laughs> All right, like thanks it. for stopping by. You bet. What's your name? Uh, my friends call me Wild Man. Okay, thanks, Wild Man. <laughs> All, right. All right. What do you think? What do you think here? This is cool. Sorry, I'm recording this too. Oh, I hope you don't mind. No, that's fine. What's your name? Luke. Luke. Okay. Yeah. There's a window. You could look in the floor. In the in the oh, transmission wow. tunnel. Oh wow. Yeah, I like how you uh, guys left it uh, in the condition, so. It, modern and old at the same time. Yeah, totally. And there's, uh, you see the knob on the, in the center? Oh, right. The tr that's park, reverse, and try. Nice. Here's a question for you. This truck with the original engine, instead yeah. of the way it is carbureted, yeah. range versus battery now, did it pick up range? No, probably no. This compared to the Lightning, what's the setup, back, forth? Uh, we should do that video. <laughs> Yeah. No, so this drives like an old truck still. Yeah. The steering, uh, there's no power steering. Uh, the kind of the springs are kind of old. We have new shocks on this, so the, the ride is a little bit better. Okay. But what about the seat uh, of the pants feel? Uh, this is slower. Yes. Because it's tuned to be slower. Gotcha. For, first of all. Yeah. Has l way less. Have, this has half the horsepower of the Lightning. So it's kind of like when you guys did that video on the international trucks. It wasn't international, but the large HD trucks. Yes, and yes. And you were stating that they could be pepped up more, but they yeah. were but they're more detuned. to feel like, yes. Yeah, they're detuned. And actually, those international trucks were detuned, they told me, because they were saying fleet drivers don't want a race truck. Correct. They want a reliable electric truck. They right? want to be able to make that transition. Yeah. So the paddle is tuned. So when you push it, it just gives it a little bit. But you could change it, right? You could go in the system and you can say, give me everything instantaneously. Does this have regenerative braking in it? Yes. So can you run this one pedal operation? <laughs> yes, and it will stop, dead stop with no brakes. I never, I've never, I didn't touch the brake pedal coming here. And the setup that's here, is this something that is designed as a kit or is this one off? Yeah, it's a kit, yeah. So um, we teamed up with Legacy, Legacy EV. Yeah. So their strength is um, they're building kits for different vehicles. So they have like a VW Bug kit, they have a Porsche kit, they have a, I don't know if they have a motorcycle kit. Um, <laughs> But so you tell them kind of like what your goal is, right? So our goal here was to kind of have a farm truck that's electric. Got gotcha. you. This kit is premium because of Tesla batteries. Yeah. It's about forty thousand dollars for the components. Okay. Twenty-five thousand dollars for the battery. Ten thousand for the motors, because there's two of them here. Yep. And five grand for everything else. Chargers, inverters, controllers, computers, all that stuff. Pumps, hoses, wires, all that is included, right? So it's like one one pallet. Like it okay. comes on one pallet and it's like everything you need, right? You got, you got it. Right. And then you have to put it together. <laughs> okay. So plus labor, right? So yeah. whatever the labor, if you're doing it yourself in your garage, yeah. or if you had somebody else do it for you, we had somebody else do it for us. The only thing that can make this cooler is was a dog. Well, is this a floor? Jeez. So, Mike, also, this is not to play music. <laughs> this is this is to also you can plug in the computer. So, okay. so you can um, 
plug in the laptop, well, obviously with the software you need, right? So that's yeah. the port you plug that into? Uh, make and there's another one inside. Okay. Well, that's a neat, uh, it's a neat trick. I like it. You see the little I do, yeah. yeah. Little tiny thing. That's all, and that's all it takes to... To cool the batteries. Yeah. Or heat them up. And, and is that constantly running, or is it only, is it yeah. thermostatically controlled? It's constantly running. So can, can I you could, make it thermostatically controlled? Uh, well, yes. So if the battery is hot, it turns on. If it cools off, yeah, it turns yeah. off. Just you also, say. in the winter, the batteries need to be warmed up. Oh, okay. So, Interesting. So, so it goes the other way. It can go the other way, too. Now, so. first responders, when they arrive at an EV, there's like an orange plug that they pull to just disable everything. Where is that here? Is there oh, that let me show emergency? you. Okay, so so you'd have to sort of hope that the first So there's responder, one here. Yeah. There's one here. There's usually some some something else on the outside. Okay. Uh, do these do these kits come to where you can uh, delete the axles and have just a you know a dr drive unit in between? In the axle. In the axle. Yeah. Yeah, they make it. Um, well, so it, it would take a lot more engineering and fabrication to fit that into the vehicle. So it's not on sale yet. Okay. I, I actually test drove a uh, GMC 2500 oh, okay. with e-axles. Okay. It was made e by uh, Magna. They're called e-axles. Okay. And they look identical to this yeah. axle. So it mounts in the same location with the same springs, yeah. the same shocks, oh, wow, really? the same everything. So it's not an engineering feat. It's just that the differential becomes the motor. It's a packaging feat. <laughs> yes, it's a packaging feat. So that's possible, but that's not on sale yet. Yeah. Well, like there's also this. just a lot of static loss driving a transfer case and a differential. Uh -huh. There's just a lot of loss running all that around. So it would be easier to, it would be more efficient to move the motor directly to the drive. Yeah, yeah. which is possible or yeah. will be possible very, all, all very soon. All it costs is money, <laughs> right? Yes. Well, I'm going to continue well, sort of thinking that that's a thing to do someday. Do, do you have a vehicle in mind? Yeah, Ford for Ranger, a Ford Ranger, a Ford would, Ranger. Be, would be a, for, for work, for my work. And I just think as a platform, it's sort of the ideal EV. It's it's small, light, um, you know. They and you don't drive long distances, and I don't or do drive, you? No, not for work. No, okay. I stay right here in town. And so, so okay. and I, I mean, I, I clock my mileage, and every day I put on. I think a, I think a long day is 180 miles. Okay. You know, most most days are 90 to 110 for me, and so so an EV is really a an so ideal solution. So if you solution. calculate the battery size and the motor size, yeah. you could probably do it if, yeah. if, if, when you make that calculation. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but I don't want to. I don't want to just barely meet my needs, right? So, so, so as I've, I've thought of the uh, F-150 Lightning, you know, 230 mile range is like the edge of my envelope, especially in the cold weather, right? Yeah. So 230 becomes 200. If yeah. I'm at 180 on a tough day, and then I then I have no options for adding anything to my day. Plus, it's for work. Plus, it's for work. If it's, you miss if you miss your job, you miss your job. Miss your job, and, and yeah. so so my day sometimes is I get a phone call late in the day and say, hey, run over here and do that. If I just need that extra 40 miles, that shoots me in the face. So, so that's again. So you need the buffer. So I need you need the buffer. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's why a 300 mile range is kind of kind of a critical Where number for me. Yeah. Yep. What do you think? Totally classic. Well, I thought it, from a distance, I just thought it'd be it's an old Ford truck yeah. and no big deal. Uh, and then I saw a, like a, a new orange wire, and I'm like, yeah, like wait, I bet yeah. uh, they did so something. If to you that. look underneath, that's where the motors are. So you can kind of tell between the frame rails. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I worry about the quick on old metal steel in the rear. Yeah. Like me, meaning too much torque and too much. Yeah, know, for the old axles. For the old, for the old right. axles. So the pedal can be tuned for that. So basically, basically, um, you can tune different. It's a computer sure. now, right? Right. So you can accelerate more gentle, which is what we have now. What's Ford think about it? Or you I have? Don't, it? I don't know yet. Don't know yet. I don't know yet. <laughs> but they do have their own electric truck. Yeah, they do. Right. Yeah. So like the Y. The, yeah. Well, the why, partially the why. You know, what do you think about the why? I, you know, I, I don't know what the why is yet. So well, like, the why is we had an old truck. Yeah. We did several videos yeah. with it. It was falling apart yeah. as far as mechanicals. Yeah. We were like, what should we do? Should we V8 swap it or should we go this route? And we decided to do something new because we haven't never done this yeah. before. Right. So you have to have like a fake motor. 
sound? Uh, it doesn't have one. I mean, you could, you could, you could go. Like, I mean, you could. So you're in the V8 crowd. You want a V8 power. I want a real old truck, but this is a really awesome. Well, yeah, this is not. This is this doesn't. This makes different noises. Yes. Yeah. It makes. Uh, yeah. So you can sneak up on hogs and stuff. You can go <laughs> wild could, pig hunting. You can sneak right up on those hogs. <laughs> yes, you, that's a real. You, you wouldn't even. They would yeah. never hear you coming. It's like. That's so funny. So it, it's a sleeper truck. So oh, it, looks, it looks sleeper. old, yeah. Yeah. but it's something else. Yes, so. it's, it's a great yeah. idea. No, I almost got run over by a Prius in a parking lot. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, because you couldn't hear it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Because you, saw you the can't Prius. hear the super thing. It's just like ah, right there. That's to say, you're gonna kill somebody with this. You're gonna I sneak hope right up I on them. And... No, I. No, the color alone is good. It... The uh, tires alone make so much. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Get over there. As long as you get going at 15, 20 miles an hour, they'll hear you coming. So uh, cool. Was the first video Tommy did, was it like, why did you ruin this truck? Yeah, or something like, like I, yeah, I saw that part. It's a great I project. Oh, thank it's you. Really cool. I didn't get to watch it all because I've just been so busy. Well, but like, it is a controversial thing, yeah. right? Because yeah. people love old trucks, old vehicles. We do too. Yeah, yeah. it's better than the old engine. You guys so. had well, the old engine was falling apart. I mean, it was, the transmission yeah. was falling it apart. Was, like, yeah. It was, yeah. I could remember. Saw me doing the video in that one, it was like <laughs> King of the Hammers is a big off-road race. Yeah, yeah. They've established an electric vehicle class, and I'm wondering how much it would cost to stick this into a, a, a pre-existing off-road vehicle. Yeah, what kind of vehicle? Whatever you would this would so, fit in. So so here's the thing. So um, this kit, it's a kit by Legacy EV. Oh, it was okay. it was made for a classic Bronco and or Ford truck. But okay. they can also help uh, organize a kit for any vehicle. First guy that ran King of the Hammers with an EV he was the only one in the first year. Was that a Toyota two years was ago. a Nissan yes. system? Yes. yes. And what they did was they worked hard on being able to swap the battery packs because they had no idea what kind of you know range or right. yeah. So and this it, is and it this is really a large well. pack, that, which is why it's more expensive. Um, um, together about 80 kilowatt hours. Oh wow. So this truck I've tested to about 150 miles on the highway. Wow. Um, so 150 miles, but off-roading it will be less, obviously. Oh yeah. The distance will be less because you're using more energy, you're right. going up mountains or up, up rocks, you know, all this yep. stuff. That's basically and I like works. it that they still use, they just take the, the big copper plates, drill the holes in them and you bolt them together. I mean, that's, I started, I designed typewriters for IBM in 1973. Okay. So that's 1973 kind of technology where it's just super basic. You put it together and it works. Yes. And I love that stuff. Today's stuff is too fancy. <laughs> and and it's supposed to be, have a case. Do you see those black marks? Uh -huh. That's, that's where you're gonna, supposed to drill and have a cover. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to have a cover. Oh, you don't want people leaning no, their please. elbow in and shooting no. across there? No, no please. You want to touch the copper. No, don't touch that, please. <laughs> you gotta lick your fingers first. <laughs> Is it on? Hey guys, I've got Ryan here from Fox. So Ryan, you were here most of the weekend. I was here all weekend. Yes, so tell me the reception that the truck got. The truck uh, got amazing reception. Uh, I think I'd say 97% of the people really loved the truck. A lot of people were excited about the belt. 97, you said? I would say 97%. There were Upper probably 90s. Yeah, there was probably 3% curmudgeon out there that were like, it doesn't have an exhaust pipe, it doesn't smell like gas. Yeah, I can't drive it. You okay. know, so I, you know, I, and the skeptics, I would actually go up and uh, talk about how. Um, not the V8s came with the V8 hood badge, and they, you know, there was people that actually could foretell the future. Yes. And I put my hand lighting. over the uh, the hood badge, pull the hood down, and do some magic. And people were like kind of blown away with the fact oh, that sweet. they could foretell the future with the, with electric. Power. You know, I was really nervous because I know uh, Overlanders are very discerning, right? They mm -hmm. they like what they like. So I'm really happy that this truck got a good reception. Yeah. Well, yeah. the thing is, is, I think that the community is really open open to um, technology and new things, but I think everybody has um, a relationship to Ford trucks or an old truck, whether it was a grandparent yeah, or their totally. first car in high school. Um, I actually ran into a friend that I hadn't seen in 30 years. The last time we hung out, 
We drove his green Ford F100 that left us stranded overheating on the side of the road. And <laughs> so you were a menist? Well, what was really funny is we hadn't seen each other in 30 years, so we're talking here at the booth, and I recognized him, and it was really fun to kind of catch up. Yeah. So it was one of those. Well, those that's all. Thanks uh, also for your support on this project. It was great. Yeah. Um, you know, how, we're going to continue to see how things go, and if we can help you guys out in the future on this, let us know. Sounds good. How about we start with this, kind of like why, right? Why we chose the components we chose, yep. and uh, let's dig a little deeper into it. Yeah, so anytime you build an EV, you've got to source parts from 12 to 20 different manufacturers to make one complete conversion package. So that's what we do at Legacy EV. We combine all those into one kit. Um, and we've got a decision process pipeline, I guess you could call it, we walk customers through to help determine what's gonna be the best build for what they're trying to do. Yeah. So we can talk a little bit about that today in the F100. So let's take a deep dive into the battery modules and packs and look inside. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at, battery module right here. Sweet. So what are so those look like little briefcases, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, little bricks. <laughs> little bricks. So how do you combine them? I mean, we talked about series and parallel already. Yeah. And, and these come from recyclers? Yeah. So to speak, right yep. now, at least right now. Yeah. So the nice thing about these mountain roads is I'm letting off the gas on these turns and the regen just starts up for me. So I'm not trying to move my foot back and forth between gas and brake. And it's a really smooth driving experience. 